Good evening. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council, County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to elected officials. You should know that elected officials have the final say on any issue before us tonight. If you wish to speak on agenda item tonight, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those of you who wish to speak, state your name and address, and clearly, when you come to the podium, please speak clearly into the microphone. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition of an item have 10 minutes to present each side. The time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. If you are here opposing or rezoning tonight, you should be aware of what is called a protest petition. A protest petition can be very helpful to those residents who live in the rezoning area. Please consult the planning department staff for any details on a protest position, and they will be happy to help you. You should also keep in touch with your planning department as when your case will go before the elected excuse me, officials for the final vote. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if any motion fails or ties, the recommendation, recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Beal, <coughs> Commissioner Beelan, Commissioner Busby, Present. Vice Chair Davis, Present. Commissioner Freeman, Present. Commissioner Gibbs, Present. Commissioner Huff, Here. Commissioner Hollingsworth, Present. Commissioner Hyman, Present. Commissioner Miller, Present, Commissioner Paget, Present, Commissioner Whitley, Commissioner Winders. Present. I received an email uh, yesterday, um, Chair Harris will be arriving late, and so I took on the initial responsibilities, but he will be in attendance. I didn't hear anything from Commissioner Whitley. Um, we'll move forward. Uh, are there any adjustments? Uh, t I think there are some adjustments to the agenda. Good evening, Vice Chair Davis, members of the Commission, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Um, we are requesting one adjustment to the agenda. Uh, we received notification today uh, via email from the applicant's agent for case 5C Google Hub parking expansion that they intend to request for a continuance of the item so we are asking that you move that item up to item 5A so it can be heard uh, as the first item following the approval of the minutes to make that request. Is there a uh, motion? For so move. Second. It's been properly moved and second that we move a item C on the agenda uh, so first, for today's hearing, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Motion carries 11 to 0. Moving on to approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the minutes. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Approval of the minutes. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion carries 11 to 0. Well, since I don't really get to do this much, I'm going to open the public hearing on the first item, even though Chair Harris is here. And we'll start by item C, golf parking. How do you pronounce that? Google Golf parking expansion, excuse me, plan amendment A1400007. Thank you again, Vice Chair uh, Davis and members of the Commission, Pat Young again. In lieu of the uh, staff report for this item, I'm going to ask uh, Howard Pardner, the applicant's agent, to come up and address the Commission, uh, again, with the understanding that he's intending to ask for a continuance. If that's not granted, we'll, of course, be prepared to provide the staff report. Could you please speak into the mic, sir? Thank you. Okay. Can you? How's this? Is that good? Okay. My name is Howard Partner. I'm a landscape architect, and I'm the applicant uh, for the Google Hoff parking expansion. Um, we have been working with the Tuscaloosa Lakewood Neighborhood Association to come to an agreement with them um, for some additional uh, conditions beyond the actual uh, rezoning request. We're very close to an agreement. We thought we would have it uh, prior to the beginning of this meeting. There are a few uh, technicalities to work out, 
And so uh, at this time, in order to um, um, bring on the support of the neighborhood for our rezoning request, we are requesting that uh, uh, we be granted a one month continuance um, so that we can come back to the board um, with uh, the support of the neighborhood and I think we should be able to have it at that time. I'd be glad to answer any questions if you need any clarifications. Uh, thank you. I'll bring it before the board uh, for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, continue the hearing in case 5C on our agenda today uh, until our meeting in March. It's been properly moved and second for a continuance, one month continuance on plan amendment case A1400007. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, can we also clarify that that also includes uh, the oh, zoning again. case? Zoning, okay. It is uh, been properly moved and second that we grant a continuance for the applicant for plan amendment case 140007 as well as zoning case 1400. Zero two seven. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Thank you. M motion carries twelve to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you, board and community, and I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, just one update: uh, Commissioner Whitley has an excuse absence. I don't know if that was brought out during the roll call. Okay, uh, now I will open the public hearing for item 5A, Highway 54, Residential A140005, and complimentary zoning case 1400018. Mr. Chair, Pat Young again with the Planning Department. I'm going to turn it over to um, Case Planner Carla Rosenberg in just a moment, but I can first certify for the record that all public hearing items before you this evening have been advertised in accordance with the provisions of law and their affidavits to that effect on file with the Planning Department. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Carla Rosenberg with the Planning Department. I'm presenting case A140005, Highway 54 Residential. The applicant is Hopper Communities, and they're proposing to amend approximately 21.72 uh, acres of the future land use map from office to medium high density residential. And this change allows them to construct a residential development of approximately 300 apartment units on the site. So here is the land use context map um, showing the broader area. Um, you can see that Interstate I-40 runs just north of the site and Highway 54 just below it. Um, the site is mostly surrounded by residential uh, land uses and there's a multi-family development, Waterford Village, that sits directly east. There have been a few changes to the future land use map for this par parcel over time. Uh, the 1993 Triangle Township Plan recommended office, um, and the 2005 Comprehensive Plan also recommended office. So in the justification statement, the applicant suggested that the current land use designation of office ought to be amended because it would provide a better transition between the low density residential uses to the south and east and the office um, to the west. It also supports future mass transit along the NC54 uh, and I-40 corridors and then um, other uh, medium high density residential projects are found uh, adjacent to the site and also are planned around it. So staff has reviewed the request against these four criteria found in the Unified Development Ordinance. And we found that the proposed amendment was consistent with land use policies in the comprehensive plan, including those regarding suburban tier and contiguous development. And the first encourages lower density development outside of the downtown and compact neighborhood tiers and suburban transit support areas. And the second supports orderly development patterns that take advantage of existing urban services and avoids leapfrogging patterns of development. Much of the surrounding area of, of, to the parcel is already designated residential with medium high density residential as mentioned directly east. This is an area of rapid residential growth because of its position along the two major traffic corridors, 
and their expectations of um, future mass transit as well. We determined there not to be any substantial adverse impact with regard to infrastructure, environmental protection, or future demand for land uses. And finally, staff determined that the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the pr proposed residential land use. And so, the request meets all of their criteria for plan amendments, and staff is recommending approval. Thank you. And I will leave um, for Amy Wolf to present the zoning portion. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. The accompanying zoning case is Z1400018. And the uh, request um, is from Hopper Communities, and it's in the city's jurisdiction. And the current designation of the site is Residential Suburban 20, Office Institutional, Office Institutional with a development plan. And the requested zone is Residential Suburban Multifamily with a development plan. The site is 21.72 acres, and uh, the request would be for 320 multifamily residential units. Again, the site is, well, it's four parcels along NC54 Highway opposite Revere Road and east of Barbie Road. It is in the suburban tier. It is also in the FJB watershed protection overlay as well as the major transportation corridor overlay or a, par a port, the northern portion of the site is within the MTC or major transportation corridor overlay. The request does meet the minimum standards of the Unified Development Ordinance for the RSM district, as shown here. The existing site um, here uh, has some environmental features. There's three non-jurisdictional ponds, intermittent streams, and associated wetlands. It was, uh, there was some previous agricultural use on site, um, and there's the frontage is solely along NC-54 Highway. I'll clarify some of the proposed conditions in a bit. Um, here's the graphic representation uh, showing the buffers, the, the stream buffers, the project boundary buffers, the access points. Uh, uh, other commitments on the site include, um, I do want to refer you to along uh, NC-54 Highway along the bottom of this slide, uh, the, the, the access point to the right is site access one and to the left is site access two. Uh, that'll be uh, become important in a moment. Uh, the maximum request is for a maximum of 320 residential units. There's one potential stream crossing. There's five site access points, two of which are along NC-54 Highway. Uh, maximum impervious surface of 70%, which is the maximum for the FJB watershed protection overlay and tree coverage at 20%. The graphic commitments uh, are the tree preservation areas, the location of those, the access points, and the potential stream crossing. Other commitments include the, the housing type, which is apartments and or townhouses, and their accessory uses, dedication of right-of-way along NC-54 Highway. There's improvements to site drive access one, which is the easternmost site access point. This would be a temporary site access point with uh, associated improvements for that use, uh, and as well as site drive access to which uh, will be required. And additionally, uh, with the uh, right-of-way dedication along the frontage of the site, uh, four feet of additional asphalt pavement will be provided to accommodate the bicycle lane and constructing a bus pullout and concrete pad or shelter along NC-54 Highway. There's design commitments associated with the site uh, that describe the style, roof line, building materials, any uh, architectural features, and how the site will transition to the context. And the site is not consistent with the future land use map, which designates uh, the area as office. You've heard the plan amendment report. Um, the request, this should say no, um, the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan policies that apply to the site, and should the plan amendment be approved, this request would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and other applicable policies and ordinances. And staff is available for any questions. Thank you, Amy. I have one person signed up to speak. Uh, 
I turn to Eaton. Good evening. Uh, Jared Edens with Edens Land Corp. I'm here representing my client, uh, Bart Hopper, with Hopper Communities. I'll try to be brief. I know you've got a long agenda tonight. Uh, appreciate staff's summary of, of our request. Um, I'm just going to re reiterate, reiterate a couple points and clarify a couple items. Uh, we are requesting a rezoning and land use amendment for a, a multifamily development. Um, in our opinion, this is a sensible request. If you look at the area along 54, if you look at the uh, access to retail and the availability of um, transit along 54, this seemed like a logical request. Um, we did perform a traffic study as part of the project. Uh, the traffic study was approved by both NCDOT and City of Durham staff. Uh, all the improvements listed on the plan are as a result of that traffic study. Um, I do want to clarify uh, the road improvements mentioned, um, and I talked with, with staff, I want to make sure I clarify this, but items three through nine of the text amendment, uh, text commitments, which mention all the specific road improvements, uh, those are required prior to the first CO for the project. It's a little unclear how we have it listed on the plan, uh, but it's required prior to CO, not required prior to building permit. Uh, we did ha have a neighborhood meeting in June of 2014 uh, we only had one person actually on the on the sign-in list. Uh, we have no opposition that I'm aware of. Uh, we have staff support here tonight. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other people in the audience wishing to speak on this item? Do we have anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? If not, I will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. I have Commissioner Miller. No. Commissioner Huff, Commissioner Winders, Commissioner Huff, you have three minutes. Um, Jared, um, could you explain to people that there is a second development next to this one that is going to explain to them about that access that that uh, access road that is not going to be permanent, the one that's across from from Revere. Correct. Um, yeah, so east of this project, is uh, we had a zoning here several months called the Madry Parcel, uh, which was approved for a townhome development. Uh, that parcel spans from our property, our western property line, I said east, our western property line over to Barbie Road. So our easternmost access point, which is closest to Revere Road, is a temporary access point. And what we negotiated with the city and DOT is when the Madry parcel is developed adjacent to us, which will provide connectivity over to Barbie Road, we will remove the easternmost driveway to 54. So the permanent access will only be one drive to 54, which obviously DOT was very happy about, and it still works for, for our layout. Thanks. Commissioner Wine. people and have le uh, fewer cars and support transit better than uh, uh, higher higher income people uh, uh, just wondered if you uh, what kind of thoughts do you have on global housing yeah so we honestly we haven't had a lot of conversation about that uh, my client it's it's we're looking at it as a market rate multifamily project I know you and I have had several conversations in the past I mean my my personal opinion is the affordable housing issue in Durham is something that needs to be tackled at a larger level than just a piecemeal project by project approach. I think if the ordinance was re rewritten to give a little more incentive, maybe a little more density bonus than what is in there now, you'll have more people trying to take advantage of it. I think the way it's currently written, you don't see a lot of projects like that because there's just not enough incentive from the developer's side. So uh, I understand it's a an important issue to you and I 
uh, I agree with you, but I don't think it's we can't approach it on a project by project basis. This is my opinion. So we have not had a lot of conversation about that for that reason. Commissioner, White, would you speak in the in the mic? We can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> so c can you tell me about the mix uh, the the uh, mix of of housing types and and costs that are expected in those two developments that are going to be a, uh, uh, well maybe we should can leave it to this one but but uh, it seems to me that those two developments are, uh, on next to each other are going to kind of function as one neighborhood is would that be correct yeah I mean with the interconnectivity um, like uses next door it may feel sort of as one neighborhood I mean we're requesting multifamily here with the flexibility of doing apartments and townhomes. I mean, most likely the majority of the project, it's an apartment site, most likely. So um, as far as product mixes, there may be a small townhome component, but it, it will mainly be apartments, I'm sure. The okay. property to the west will probably most likely be townhomes. Yeah. Okay. Then on, on the transportation issue, um, the I know there's a policy about uh, 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 the road capacity ca capacity can go up to a hundred or the traffic can go up to a hundred and ten percent of the road capacity I believe oh. <laughs> yeah he took some of my time right uh, <laughs> um, and I was just uh, it seems to me that traffic is pretty bad around there and and we mentioning uh, uh, several of the intersections are at, uh, operating at F and and there they will be at F after after uh, before and after Come in, get to your question. There it is. Get to your question. Yeah, uh, but the question is when you do the traffic study, you um, do, and this may be a question for Mr. Judge, but um, uh, if uh, do you include you in co in computing the ex projected traffic? Do you include the expected developments that aren't aren't built yet, but that we have approved? But do you include other developments like the the two corner sites on Barbie and and? Um, okay, uh, I think we have your 54. question, Mr. Judge. Would you like to address that, Bill Judge, uh, City of Durham, Department of Transportation. Yeah, the traffic impact analysis does include any other developments in the general vicinity project study area for which we do have traffic impact analysis for those um, smaller projects like the uh, one immediately adjacent to the west um, in reviewing the staff report. And there's a comprehensive plan section that you're referring to with the 110%. We did look at the, the capacity of, of that development as well as the one across the street to the south and um, I thought those numbers were in your staff reporting yeah they are they're in there it, but, yeah. what I was wondering about though was um, do you have to do that traffic in, uh, impact analysis on a project that doesn't have to have a rezoning or uh, you know like a by right type of project do you have to do a traffic impact analysis and is it include would it be included in this uh, there's other vacant land there uh, in the in that area you know that will impact the, uh, yes um, we uh, we do not assume any existing vacant parcels that don't have any pen pending developments we don't assume any by right uh, land uses in association with the comprehensive plan or anything density on on those projects just because it's too open-ended with the number of cases you see and um, but we do include those that have site plans or uh, zoning spending. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, yes ma'am. Hi, um, I see mention of room for uh, allowing for a bike lane and I see mention of um, an asphalt pad for a transit stop, but I don't see any mention of sidewalks. Is there any consideration to um, adding sidewalks in, along that frontage? Yeah, we generally we don't we don't proffer that as a, a specific commitment because it's required by city code. And so when we go through the site plan process, we'll we'll have, be required to build sidewalk along the frontage. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, uh, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, if the commission's ready for a motion. Commission, we're ready. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, I move that we approve this particular item, which would be 5A on the agenda, both the plan amendment and the rezoning. I second. I think we have to take them separately. Yeah. Yeah, Do we? Separately. Yeah. All right, then I move the plan amendment. I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Paget that we approve item 5A, the tax amendment. All those in favor, let it be known by their right hand. Plan amendment, okay. Motion oh, carries 12 to zero. Okay. Mr. Chairman, at this time I move that we approve the rezoning that's embodied in uh, case 5A on the agenda. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Freeman that we approve item five zoning case. All those in favor, let it be known by show of right hand. Opposition? Likewise. The motion carries 12 to 0. Thank you. And commissioners and people coming to the mic, please speak directly into the mic because this is being telecast and we want the general public to be able to hear what you're saying. So thank you. Okay, so item 5B, Hamilton Center 2, A1400006 and zoning case 1400021. Carla Rosenberg with the Planning Department. Uh, this is for A140006 Hamilton Center 2. The applicant, Horvath Associates, um, proposing to amend approximately five acres from office to commercial. This would allow the applicant to develop a greater variety of commercial uses, including restaurants and retail. The future land use context map shows that the site is situated southwest quadrant of NC Highway 54 and NC Highway 751. The current land use designation of office creates a transition between the commercial node to the northeast and the medium density residential to the south. Actual uses in the area include a strip style commercial, commercial development, um, Hope Valley Commons, to the east across Highway 751. There are single family homes and multifamily residential to the immediate south and multifamily residential copper mill to the west. And just north of the site is a Rite Aid, an animal hospital, and a dentist's office. An earlier small area plan called for this site to be designated as high density residential, which at that time signified eight uh, density units per acre, dwelling units per acre uh, or more. The 2005 comprehensive plan recommended office. In the justification statement, the applicant suggests that the current land use designation of office ought to be amended because uh, the cur commercial designation is more compatible with the surrounding residential and commercial uses. Staff has reviewed the request against these four criteria found in the Unified Development Ordinance and found that these uh, policies apply. The first um, discourage, discourages auto-oriented strip style development in favor of commercial nodes placed at regular intervals. And the second calls for commercial node spacing of at least a half mile with clustering at major intersections. The majority of the area surrounding the parcel is already designated office, while the current designation of office intended to create a transition from a commercial node into the surrounding residential area. Numerous multifamily developments are now located south and west of the site that do not necessarily require this transition. We determined no substantial adverse impact regarding infrastructure, environmental protection, or future demand for land uses, and we determined that the site is of adequate size and shape to accommodate the proposed residential land use. And so the request meets all of the criteria for plan amendments, and the staff is recommending approval. Um, I can take any questions after um, Amy Wolf's presentation of the zoning portion. Thank you. Good evening, Amy Wolf, planning with the planning department. I will present the zoning case associated with this plan amendment. 
Again, this is for a Hamilton Center 2, KZ1400021. The applicant is Horvath Associate. This is in the city's jurisdiction, and the request is from the present designation of office institutional to the proposed district of commercial general with a development plan. The site is 5.02 acres, and the, the purpose is to allow for retail and restaurant uses on the site. The site's located at 7010 uh, North Carolina 751 Highway. It's in the southwest uh, quadrant of the 751 and NC54 intersection. The site is within the FJB watershed protection overlay. Uh, this request and the associated development plan does meet the standards for the commercial general district. And the proposed site, um, there is development already on the site. It's built um, for all essential purposes, built out. There's four buildings and a stormwater feature to the south of the site. Um, the, and the there's uh, two site access drives uh, uh, to NC-54, um, excuse me, NC-751 Highway. The proposed development plan shows, and I want to make a correction in the staff report, in table D5, I indicated one site access, and, and uh, the actual um, access points are four. There are three cross access points, one to the west, uh, and two to the north, and then one onto NC-54 Highway. Uh, commitments of this development plan include a maximum 40,000 square feet of non-residential use area. And uh, again, this, uh, this should be corrected to read a total of four site access points. Uh, impervious surface maximum of 70% and tree coverage is 14%. The location of the access points are, are committed as well as tree preservation areas and the building and parking envelope. Uh, there's some text commitments associated with requests that include a concrete and bus shelter along the frontage of the site along NC-751 Highway as well as limitation of peak hour trips. There are design commitments as well that uh, specify the architectural style, roof lines, building materials, architectural features and the transitions or context to the context area. The request is not consistent with the future land use map, uh, which designates the site as office. You've heard the plan amendment report. Um, sh um, and the request does meet the requirements and the policies of the comprehensive plan that are applicable to this site, and staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, this request, this zoning request, would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and other policies and ordinances. And staff is available for your questions. Thank you, Amy. I have one person signed up to speak, Ron Herbeck. Evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Let me apologize before I begin. You're going to hear me on three cases tonight, and I'm taking Claritin D, and it's doing a wonderful job drying <laughs> out my sinuses, but it's also drying out the mouth. So I apologize up front. Uh, Ron Horvath, Horvath Associates, and representing uh, Tycon Development in this case. I won't go into a lot of the details of this, except if you've been out to the site, you'll recognize that it's completely built out. Um, the history on this project and later uh, case, you're going to hear Sutton Station run parallel. Office projects within the UDO and zoning ordinance used to allow a certain percentage of quote, accessory uses within an office development or office building of retail, providing they were office related, restaurants, retail shops like flower shops, et cetera, that would be not necessarily destination. The UDO has changed over since 2006. That definition's becoming a little bit more firm. And I believe, oh, Steve's here, no. Uh, Steve Medlin made a, called me in and said, look, we, we need to quit going on adding these accessory uses. Retail market and office market have changed. They are getting smaller, particularly the retail, and, and neighborhood markets are requiring a mixture. They want insurance office next to coffee shops, next to dentist and sweet shops. So there's that mixture occurring, and you're seeing that downtown as well as places like Patterson Place and a few others. 
This is the same thing. We actually have approval to put some restaurants in this as accessory use. But when that restaurant moves out, we don't know that another one can come back in. Hence, we're asking for the zoning. We originally went in as a neighborhood commercial, but our square footage, when you add all the buildings up, is over the 30,000 or 25,000 limit. So we had to go to general commercial. We are limiting it by the number of traffic, the trips. And what that equates out, and I think Bill can check on this or confirm it for me, about half, less than half of the total area in this development can be some type of retail business. And the other half has to, can't be more than office. And the controlling factor in a lot of that is your existing parking. So there are some give and take. We did have neighborhood meetings and strong interest and support for the project, uh, but not strong enough for them to show up tonight. We have made all the improvements, including bike lanes on uh, 751 and roadway improvements. What you see out there is what the zoning will give you, except it will have a mixture of uses within it. And by the way, that I go to my final point, we couldn't do mixed use because it wasn't quite large enough. So we're kind of an anomaly, and I ask for your support tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item? Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? If not, then I will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. I have Commissioner uh, Miller. Commissioner Miller. Oh, really quick, Ron. So the building that's there is the 40,000 square feet? Yes. So there's, this, this rezoning will not accommodate new structures or building or anything? Not additional, no. All right. And, and I do need the, to add one more thing if you'll let me when you get done. All right. Uh, and then at the, at the southern end of the property, you've got a buffer showing, but I couldn't read on the map that we got in our packet what the width and the opacity of that buffer is. It will match uh, CG to residential right now. I don't expect that property to stay residential. How, how wide is it? Uh, it's 37 and a half feet is the, with a berm, 37 and a and half. And what's the opacity, minimum opacity going to uh, be? Point six. Point six, okay. Excuse me, I have to keep asking. No, that, the I experts. don't blame you. I have to. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> and then the last thing I wanted to know is, is that the the water retention feature that's shown on the map, that's a commitment. It's got. That's be built. There. Yes. It's built. And it's got to be there. Yes, it's got to be I there. Have. And if I may add something else for the public record, I forgot to. Since this is an existing development and we're changing the zone, our perimeter buffers change, as you brought up. Thank you for bringing that, by the way, Tom. I do help. I want to add one note that's going to be added to the plan. Um, portions of this perimeter buffer that we're showing, the opacity and stuff, may be provided off-site subject to the agreement of the adjacent property owners. That note's going to be added to the plan. Let me explain that. My client, my client owns three sides. There's to the south they don't own, but he has buffers already on the west side so we can build the buffers. Office to office didn't need much. Now we need something. The only problem we have is to the north. There's one property owner that isn't my client. It's the dentist office. There's plenty of buffer there, but if they don't agree, then we may have to remove some parking spaces to build the buffer. And we believe that the between the drugstore and the clinic that that is a driveway that's exempt from it. So I'm adding this note officially to the plan that some of our perimeter buffers may be off-site with the consent of the property owner. Does the staff have any concerns with that? Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Pat Young with Planning Department again. Um, as a point of information, the required opacity of the buffer to the south would be 0.8 in Thank the you. ordinance to RS-20, just as clarification. Um, staff does not have any concerns with what the applicant is proposing they they uh, clear discuss that with us today okay um, that is allowed by right under the UDO if, if there's not a zoning involved um, but because there's a development plan zoning you all have the discretion as to whether rec to recommend it or not but it's standard practice and it meets the same intent it's just on an adjacent property if I may mr. chairman I have a question for mr. young uh, so I'm always a little nervous about these development plan provisions oh, that <laughs> the uh, these development plan provisions that involve properties which are not themselves subject to the development plan. 
you recall, we had one six or seven months ago that where we had to do a repair job on trails and what have you. Um, what happens if a future owner of the property where the buffer is located uh, decides they don't want the buffer there anymore? What impact does it have on Mr. Horvath's clients? Are they going to have to build a buffer where they currently don't have one? So that's a good question, Commissioner Miller. Uh, in order to accept the offsite buffer, we require documentation that there's a recorded easement of record um, on the adjacent property. So it's it runs with the property in perpetuity. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. What's your pleasure? I, I was just going to make one additional comment, and then I'll okay. make a motion. So I uh, this type of change makes a lot of sense to me. I appreciate the text commitment for the transit improvements as well. And so uh, I'm ready to make a motion to move uh, A1400006. Second. Motion oh, by. That, and that's the amendment. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, motion by uh, Commissioner Bugsby and second by Commissioner Miller uh, for approval of 5B A1406. All those in favor, let it be known my short sure right hands. Opposition? Motion carries 12 to 0. And complimentary zoning case? And uh, so move uh, case number Z1400021. Second. And motion for approval for Z1400021. All those in favor, let it be known my short sure right hand. All those in opposition? Motion carries 12 to 0. Thank you so much. Now, I will open the public hearing for 5D. My Manola Grill, uh, 1400008, and zoning case 1400024. Which case? Google Hub. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who, who says that? She's about searching it? for oh. it. She's searching for her case. There it is. <laughs> Carla Rosenberg, Planning Department. Um, this case, Magnolia Grill, A140008. The applicant is Horvath Associates, proposing to amend 0 0.165 acres of the future land use map from medium density residential to commercial. This would allow the applicant to create an outdoor seating area and emergency egress for an adjacent commercial structure. This is the map showing the broader land use context. Um, the site is located along Ninth Street near the intersection with West Knock Street, which you can see contains a jog at this point. The majority of the surrounding area is designated medium density residential, as is the subject site. Immediately south is a single commercial parcel, um, and other commercial uses are located further to the south. Current uses in this area include a fire station and an elementary school, which are located directly across the street, and then single family homes in the surrounding parcels. An earlier small area plan called for this site to be designated as high density residential, which at that time signified eight dwelling units per acre or more. The 2005 comprehensive plan gave the designation of medium density residential, six to 12 dwelling units per acre, which is comparable to the earlier designation. In the justification statement, the applicant suggested that the current land use designation of medium density residential ought to be amended because the proposed designation of commercial will complement the existing commercial uses to the south. The applicant further stated that the um, Durham Comprehensive Plan supports placement of commercial uses at intersections and the offset configuration of the Knox Street intersection places the site directly at the intersection. Staff has reviewed the request against these four criteria found in the Unified Development Ordinance and found these following policies apply. The first discourages auto-oriented commercial strip development in favor of pedestrian-oriented nodes and pedestrian-friendly linear corridors where appropriate. 
The second supports the spacing of commercial nodes at intervals of at least a half a mile and of clustering them at intersections. The third encourages neighborhood scale commercial nodes and linear development directly accessible to the surrounding residential neighborhoods. And the fourth promotes compatible infill on vacant or underutilized property that reinforces the existing neighborhood character. The majority of the area surrounding the parcel is designated medium density residential. However, 9th Street is a vibrant commercial corridor further south and the commercial development in the area continues to expand. We determined there to be no substantial adverse impact. And finally, staff determined that the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed residential land use. And so the request meets all the criteria for plan amendment and staff is recommending approval. And um, Ms. Wolf will present the zoning portion of this case. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the planning department. The associated zoning case is case Z1400024, Magnolia Grill. The, the geography of this site it encompasses two additional parcels than the plan amendment. Um, the applicant is 1002 9th Street LLC and 1006 9th Street LLC. It is within the city's juris jurisdiction. The request is from commercial neighborhood, which are the two additional parcels I referenced, um, and the uh, residential urban 5-2 district to combine them on a single development plan for commercial neighborhood with a development plan. The total site is 0 0.482 acres, and the proposed use is for outdoor seating and dining area. So again, it's at, um, 1000, 1002, and 1004 9th Street um, at the intersection of West Knox Street. It is an urban tier, and, and the, the, again, the two additional parcels are at the intersection of 1000 and 1002 um, 9th Street. The request does meet the minimum standards of the Unified Development Ordinance, uh, the development plan. Um, well, this is the existing conditions shown on the development plan, which show the existing building, which is about 7,000 square feet. Uh, it has uh, um, the existing uh, uh, layout of the, the, the parking area on the, on the side there by West Knox Street, uh, as well as the residentially zoned parcel to the north. The proposed conditions uh, sh show a little bit more schematically um, the Development area are, is at closer to the corner of West Knox Street at 1000 and 1002 9th Street. The portion in the rear of the currently residentially zoned parcel um, says no enclosed buildings are permitted in, in this uh, gray shading to the rear of this parcel. And th this, um, this lined shading area um, is, is shown as designated as outdoor use area. There are three access points shown on the development plan, one onto 9th Street and two onto West Knox Street. Other commitments include a maximum of 20,000 square feet of floor area, the three access points, uh, maximum 52% uh, impervious surface and tree coverage, maximum of, um, let me clarify that in just a moment, it's, it's not 90%. <laughs> so uh, let, me, let me get back to that in just a moment. So other uh, graphic commitments are the location of the access points, the building envelope, the envelope for the outdoor use area, the proposed vehicle separation, and the, um, the area that um, pr prohibits enclosed buildings. Uh, the text commitments include um, outdoor music and spe uh, speakers pr uh, are prohibited. The dining area is, uh, is not to exceed 50 seats. And the prohibited uses includes convenience stores with gas sales, retail and commercial drive through facilities, payday lenders, and uh, limited vehicle service. Requ uh, the request also includes design commitments uh, in relation to roof line, building materials, architectural features, and how it transitions to the context area. Uh, a portion of the site, the northern portion at 1004 9th Street is not consistent with the future land use map. You heard the plan amendment on that, the plan amendment request. It, uh, the request does meet the other standards of the comprehensive plan as indicated on this slide. 
and staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, this request would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and other applicable policies and ordinances. And back to the tree coverage, this site is in the urban tier. There's no required tree coverage. Uh, staff is available for your questions. Okay, thank you. I have one person signed up to speak. Ron, you're still on the, on the floor. Thank you, sir. Ron Horbath again, Horbath Associates. Uh, unique piece of property. Uh, the building itself on the commercial land is a foot off the north or the western northern property line. Um, they needed an emergency exit. As you know, I pro we named this Magnolia Grill so everyone would know where it was. It's now Monuts. If you haven't been there, it's operational. The two lots they were sitting on or are sitting on are zoned properly. Uh, they needed an emergency exit out to the north, and unfortunately, that and it's owned by the same people. It's zoned residential. Planning director made a determination. It even just to have a walkway has to have the commercial zoning. So we started into this, and we realized it would also make a very good outdoor waiting seating area. And so we, I think, work with the neighbors very well. And what we have before you uh, seems to have gained uh, good acceptance. And I ask your support in this moving forward. Be available for any questions. Thank you. OK, thank you. Are there any other people in the audience? Yes, sir, if you would come to the mic and state your name and your address very clearly. Um, my name is David Jolly, and uh, I live at 1005 Iredell Street, which is directly behind uh, Magnolia Grill, Monuts now. And I just, there are more questions than anything. Um, I've talked with uh, folks who have been working with you in the West uh, Durham, Old West Durham Neighborhood Association, and they've uh, provided some assurances. Um, so. When Magnolia Grill was in this building, it served dinner and only dinner. Um, Monuts is open from, I don't know, 7 a.m. until 9 at night. Um, it's creating parking problems uh, that may simmer down, but uh, it's immensely popular right now. And um, people at Monuts are really nice folks, but they have no control <laughs> over um, or very little control over what their customers do with their vehicles and they are parking them in front of walkways in front of driveways right up to the corner so that you can't see beyond uh, you can't see what's coming in the cross street um, I just talked with them yesterday and they've agreed to post a um, a request of their customers that they be courteous when they're parking their vehicles. But they, people, Monuts themselves are having problems because people park, they block their entries so that um, uh, delivery trucks can't get in and that sort of thing. I guess it's in part because people think they're only going to be there a minute to pick up a donut. Um, but the lines are out the door. Nobody's there a minute. Um, so that's, that's one hassle. And I don't know that there's much to be done about it. But um, I guess my point is that um, this new use of that um, uh, spot is, is changing some things that um, we were accustomed to. Um, and there was no outdoor seating at Magnolia Grill. Um, this is a residential neighborhood. Uh, there are a number of uh, uh, residences behind it and north of it. And now we're going to have people pr presumably sitting outside from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. Right now, that's their closing time. I don't know that there's anything to prevent them from staying open until 2 in the morning. Um, and I'm glad to see that they're prohibiting live music and prohibiting amplified music. But even if, they're, you know, if they've got 50 people out there, and by the way, they serve alcohol, um, and there could be some loud and rowdy people out there. Um, and you know, maybe up till 9 o'clock at night, that's not so bad. But if they decide to extend their hours, and I don't know what would prevent them from doing that, if you know, they, they, they're not just a donut shop. They're a restaurant. 
uh, with a full bar license. And, and that changes things when you talk about outside seating. So I have concerns about that. Um, and uh, the hours of operation, I, I see that there's nothing in this to limit hours of operation. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you, sir. I, I have two questions and a concern. First of all, let me address the park. And is it in it, Mr. Judd, or we don't have anybody from the police department, which would be the parking problem. There's nothing that, because it, it is public parking, right? So it's not a function of the developer to handle that piece of it. Well, yeah, the, uh, the site plan or the existing restaurant does have a parking requirement. Um, I believe the outdoor seating does not require additional because it's considered seasonal. Um, so the, the restaurant is, is meeting the parking requirement that was in place when the building was built. Um, and then beyond that, there is, I mean, the parking, there is on-street parking available. The city is leasing a lot further down 9th Street that has paid parking um, for most of the day um, with the pay station. But this is, I mean, yeah, it's not the first time we've heard complaints about parking in the 9th Street area. It's a sort of ongoing issue that our department deals with on a regular basis. Okay. And to Ron, uh, what is your operating hours right now? Uh, as he said, they're up to, I think it's like 7 in the morning till 9, but it, any restaurant, even operating now under its existing zoning, uh, their hours are flexible. I mean, Magnolia Grill served dinner, but there was nothing to prevent them from serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, they had a full bar at that one as well. What I will say is, and it's not going to solve the parking problem, we are going to be able to, re by moving the walkway to the north side, we eliminate the wooden ramp that exists on the Knox Street side. That opens that up a little bit more. And by able, the developable area back behind the building, off on that uh, northern part, will give some more room to get parking. Now, it's not going to be a lot, but it does add. But we did a parking count out there, and we exceed by about four or five spaces the required parking. Uh, we are talking and in conversation right now about installing, they weren't required during their initial startup, but putting two bike racks in now. And with the zoning approval, since we got the required, what would be required, we can add more bike racks that don't necessarily have to be out in front, mm -hmm. but can be in the outdoor area. Because we did notice a lot of bicyclists coming to the area. I guess they get their donut fix, I'm not sure. Okay. So it, that's all we can offer at this time, but operating hours, uh, they're not gonna have outdoor music and it is seasonal. If it's raining, there's no roof covering. It's not, it's meant to be like the sidewalk dining. It's if it's nice out, they're gonna sit out there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And sir, I don't know what we can do about rowdy people, you know? <laughs> right, but, um, and the parking is, at this point is not the primary concern. I think it's the noise, potential noise late at night. Um, and it seems like, I mean, the owners have made agreements uh, about other aspects of this. And I just wonder if, uh, you know, the hours of operation could be taken into consideration uh, in terms of those other. Uh, so, Pat, as, is, are there any regulations on how late uh, an establishment can be open? Hold on a minute. Um, um, staff is consulting with each other. I apologize for the delay. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, we have accepted, the Planning Commission and the Department have accepted proffers on hours of operation before. There's no ordinance standard in this regard. Okay. So it's legally permissible to do, but it has not been, uh, it's not required, and it's been a while since we've had one, and it's very difficult to enforce. Um, we do have zoning enforcement officers that work nights and weekends um, on special occasions with complaints, but not routine patrols. Okay. Uh, okay, wait a minute, we're still in the public hearing phase of commissioners. We're still in the public Okay, so um, could I get a clarification on what that means? <laughs> um, Sure. So, 
Pat Young again with the planning department. We have no basis to require any restrictions on hours of operation. If the applicant wishes to voluntarily proffer, voluntarily offer restrictions, they can be accepted and we can enforce them to the best of our ability. But there, we have no basis to require limitations uh, okay. on hours. So the city of operation. can't require it, but the proprietors could offer to correct. limit hours. That's correct. So, would your uh, sir, you you, you overstepping your boundary right now? Okay, sorry. We can't even do that to it. Okay, <laughs> not not now. We can't. Yes, Amy. Yes, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. I wanted to clarify the, the error on the slide that I presented in the staff report for 90% was not for tree coverage, it was for um, uh, impervious surface. Impervious surface, okay. Mm. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak to this item? If there's no one else, then I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it to the uh, commissioners. I have Vice Chair Davis, Commissioner Pageant, Commissioner Miller. I didn't see it. Uh, uh, okay, Mr. Bugsby, Charlie Gibbs, Huff, Deidreanna. Okay, so Vice Chair Davis. Uh, I originally had the same concerns as the uh, resident nearby about the increased parking, um, but again, it is seasonal, so you don't account for that. Thank you, Mr. Judd. I do have a question for staff. Uh, if the applicant were to proffer a, a limited access on the time of restaurant hours, could we actually do that when the actual restaurant is not even in question? This is a piece of land that, is it going to be for the whole thing? Is it just going to be for the outdoor area that's proposed? The Amy Wolf of the Planning Department, the request before you for the zoning map change is for uh, the existing <coughs> restaurant site. So it's mm. for three parcels. That includes the existing restaurant. Okay. With the addition of that uh, residential uh, property with pro for the proposed outdoor seating area but the request encumbers the 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 three parcels at the corner okay and then I have one more question for the applicant because of the need to go before the Planning Commission or uh, to get this egress out because originally this was just for an egress out but you want to take advantage of the potential outdoor seating are you willing to say we will not take advantage of the outdoor seating at this point and just use the request for the egress which it was intended for I don't I can't answer that tonight okay thank you I honestly thank you Commission Patch yeah you know just listening uh, to the individual a while ago uh, I, my question it seems like we heard that the business has been a good neighbor they're not really res they're not responsible for the parking that falls within the city the city police department the uh, there's only one resident here that's expressed any kind of concern about it for for the process and you know and we're looking at what potential may be so I think there's a lot of questions of what possibly could be um, I don't see anything there that causes me any concern so you know I'm going to su support it but you know I, I just don't see a room filled with anybody that that really sends up a flag to me okay thank you Commissioner Miller thank you Mr. Chairman um, I have concerns about this too um, I have worried about outdoor usage and we'll ask you Ron if your clients would agree to a nine o'clock limit for uh, outdoor seating would they? they I take it they're not here tonight they're not I could answer this question if they were here um, I I feel comfortable in committing to a 10 o'clock no outdoor uh, whether it's nine I would need to converse with them it doesn't apply to the rest of the restaurant or the parking just, area just the outdoor seating, outdoor 10 seating. I feel comfortable at 10 o'clock because really it's it's more for people who are waiting to get in mm -hmm. if you notice they have an outdoor seating area in the front people could actually eat out there but it's more like a waiting area right. to get inside 
Um, but yes, I feel comfortable with 10. I may be able to drop it back to nine, but I won't be able to do that tonight. All right, I understand. Thank you for your uh, response to that. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, with actually with that answer, I'm going to support the plan amendment and the rezoning. But I want to make it clear that in giving it the support, I don't agree at all with the staff justification for the plan amendment change. Uh, I, I just think it's all wrong. This isn't the 9th Street Business District. This is the Old West Durham neighborhood. Uh, and we want, in my opinion, the best policy here is to draw a bright line between those two parts of the city, the 9th Street Commercial District and the Old West Durham neighborhood at Green Street. And that needs to be a bright line. One of the things that we do when we create these compact neighborhoods, uh, in my opinion, that's extremely important, not only do we free up the zoning rules inside the compact neighborhoods when we turn them into design districts, we need to tighten up the protections we give the surrounding areas because they become targets for expansion and redevelopment. If we are serious about preserving affordable housing, then, then we have to do this. And Old West Durham is a block of desirable, affordable housing that, in my opinion, can't be replaced. In f if we get future requests to change the uh, future land use map or the zoning in Old West Durham near Knight Street, uh, I'm going to look at it with very strict scrutiny. This particular property, though, is exceptional. It has the Scarborough grocery store on it. It was built before there was zoning. It's got a building that's one foot off the property line. And so consequently, we cannot have the buffer that normally we would want to see. Because that's there and we're not going to eliminate it, I think then in this limited circumstances, I would change the future land use map and the zoning to add that extra lot with the understanding that we're not going to expand the build buildings onto it, and we will in thereby get the buffer that ought to be there under the current code. So I'm supporting the rezoning. We'll make an, a motion at the appropriate time. Commissioner Freeman. I just, I just had a few questions about the grading there. You mentioned that you were doing the bike racks. I don't know how much of that property is being regraded. None of it. It, it, there'd be a little bit towards the back if parking's put at the rear of it. Um, on the front bike racks that we're looking at right now will go in the front sidewalk area where the benches are. Um, if we do additional, if the rezoning goes through on the northern residential piece, then we can also install some bike racks in the area where the dining tables are because it's not required to be at the front door. It's non-required bike parking. So it won't take regrading or ADA requirements there. The only thing we have to do is get a sidewalk, and it can be wooden if it need be, out from the uh, building to the uh, Ninth Street along that. And this wouldn't impact the back alleyway, would it? No. Okay. Commissioner Bergsbach. Thank you. You've dealt with my main issue, which is the concern that was raised about the noise issue. Uh, this was a difficult month to be on the Planning Commission to have to go to Monuts and Google Huff to do on-site uh, <laughs> review of these proposals. So I'm looking forward to next month. But, but I did see firsthand, I, was, I went on a Friday morning and you could see the traffic issues. I know that's something that we're going to have to figure out. Uh, but I do think, I hope that the business will, I appreciate the 10 p.m. noise limit. I hope it's 9 p.m. because you do see the residential areas for folks with young families. The difference between 9 and 10 p.m. Even is us old guys. Significant. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that's true as well. So uh, I, hope, I, hope you will, I hope they will take the 9 p.m. time. I think it's better for them long term to work with the neighbors because there, there are going to be more of these kind of concerns. But given your proffer, I am going to plan to support I'll commit this. to the 10. I just I need to get permission for the 9. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Gibbs. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Busby have just about covered my questions. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Huff. Um, I am curious about this gray area that says no enclosed buildings per permitted the yeah we didn't want to expand the buildings further north next to the residential there may be service areas out there as far as like some additional parking um, mm -hmm. it's a dead-end space we didn't want it for dining uh, but we did also did not want buildings going out into there and so we 
proffered that there would be no buildings in that area to make the encroachment to the residential that much worse. Well, I think I was curious as to whether it could be used for parking. It's a possibility, yes. Mm -hmm. Because there, it's the way the parking's set up, they need a little turnaround area because you, you basically get in there and you have to back out. So we're hoping to be able to use that to construct it. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know, I guess this is a question for staff, but if the commitment about the closing time or the, uh, the, the time uh, beyond which uh, people can't be out in the outdoor seating um, is committed to, how does that affect any potential future owners of a business on the site? Uh, Commissioner Bielan, the commitment would run with the property in perpetuity unless there was a rezoning on the property. Okay, Commissioner, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, Miller. I'd like to make a motion, if I may. Uh, hold on just a sec. Commissioner Ryan. I, I, I think that the uh, uh, limitation of the hours to the outside part is a pretty good solution to this, but how does it work? Uh, are we going to be able to add that to the, to the development plan now before we vote on it? It, it would I'd go before the city council. It would it would go on on it as a recommendation before it go to the city council. But we're so we'll add that to our motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was good. He's good with it. Mr. Chairman, if I may, then with regard to item five D of our agenda, which would be the plan amendment A fourteen quadruple aught eight, uh, I move that we approve the uh, plan amendment. Second. You want to A at the time. Okay. All right. It's a motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Bexby that we approve 5D14 A140008. All those in favor, let it be known by a show of hands. That's what the zone. In favor, show of hands. Uh, right hand. All those in opposition. The motion carries 12 to 0. Then, Mr. Chairman, if I may, make yes. a motion with regard to the zoning case that goes along with this, which is 14 triple aught 24. I move that we recommend to the City Council that they approve this rezoning on condition that the developers uh, add to their committed elements in their development plan uh, limitation of business hours for the outdoor seating area uh, to uh, a time uh, preferably nine o'clock but not later than ten o'clock you have a second yeah it's p.m. is okay second okay motion by Commissioner Miller second by Commissioner Bugsby that we approve uh, 5d zoning case with this stipulation that uh, a time not time restriction uh, hours of operation be, if possible, limit to 9 p.m. and no later than 10 for, for the outdoor portion. Okay, all those in favor of that motion, let it be known by showing the right hand. All those in opposition. Motion carries 12 to zero. Thank you so much. Now we will move to item six, public hearings on a map change request for 6A to Auto Park Center, Z14-0011. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we're gonna vote it over three times already. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. You all have seen this case. Amy, I can't hear you. You all have seen this case recently. Um, this item was before the commission uh, in, in, at your November meeting. The applicant has made uh, some changes uh, which brings it back before you today. Um, the case is Auto Park Center Z140011. The applicant is Sheets. It's within the city's jurisdiction. The existing zoning is commercial neighborhood with a development plan and the proposal still remains commercial general with a development plan and I'll explain the difference in the development plan as we get to it. The site is 6.23 acres and the proposed use is for a mix of retail and restaurant uses. The site is uh, 
at 7520 NC 751 Highway, which is just north of uh, the Interstate 40 and, uh, and 751 intersection and is between the Army Corps land, you'll see on this map uh, in the green shading area. The site meets the minimum standards for the commercial general district, as shown here. Uh, the existing site is unchanged from the November meeting. Uh, it, it, it is have uh, forested areas. There are some slope down to a stream feature uh, towards Interstate 40. It is shown here with the buffer. And there is still a curb cut from 751 into the um, eastern, um, eastern portion of the site, northeastern portion. The difference uh, is on the development plan where the applicant has requested or changed their, uh, their proposed buffers um, along the, the short, uh, short property boundary to the uh, north and the, uh, and the rear of the parcel um, up until the stream buffer. Um, the, the plan that you saw in November showed a 30-foot point six opacity buffer. The one, bef the change before you today is for a 10-foot or point two opacity buffer, which shows su uh, subject to opacity verification um, off-site. Um, uh, the commission voted on this item in November with a vote of 12 to zero. As a reminder. Uh, that is the only change between uh, November's request and the request before you today. All the other commitments and intensity and other uh, minimum and graphic and text commitments remain the same. They are in your staff report. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan, the applicable policies uh, of, of the comprehensive plan, the future land use map. And staff determines that this request is still consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And staff is available to answer any of your questions. Okay, I have one person signed up to speak. Uh, Attorney Biker. Good evening, Chairman Harris, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group in Durham. I'm here tonight representing Sheets for this zoning map change. With me tonight from Sheets are Jamie Gerhart and Tom Anastasi, along with our land planner Bob Zumwalt from McAdams and Frank Amenia from Davenport, our traffic engineer. First of all, I want to thank our case planner Amy Wolf for clearly presenting why we are back before the Planning Commission. Long story short, after we received your recommendation for approval back in November, we started the detailed engineering work for this challenging site. Through that process, we realized that we had overstated our project boundary buffer. This buffer modification needs to be shown on our development plan, and that's why we're here again this evening. We wish to emphasize that we are not seeking any increase to the approximately 6,400 square foot Sheets convenience store that we have proposed at this location ever since we began working on this zoning map change. Same number of gas pumps, same seating area, same building envelope, same impervious surface limitation, as a zoning map change that the Planning Commission reviewed and recommended, recommended approval for back on November 11, 2014. Accordingly, we again respectfully ask for your recommendation of approval, and our team will be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Are there other members in the audience that would like to speak to this item? Do we have other members in the audience that would like to speak to this item? Well, I'm going to close the public hearing. And before I bring it back to the commissioners, I don't have uh, 5A in my packet. Staff, I don't have 5A in my planning packet. Okay, now. <laughs> I, okay, let me bring it back before the commissioners. I know uh, Vice Chair Davis wanted to speak to this. No, no, I have that. I don't have this. Read the comments. Chad, one question for staff. Under the summary, uh, you mentioned that land totaling acreage, a mix of retail and r restaurant use is not committed. Why is that put in there in terms of not committed? Is there any other uses that may be uh, put on this site if not committed? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Amy Wolf with the Planning Commission. Um, 
planning department, excuse me, um, there's no committed use for the site. So anything permitted under the commercial general district would be permitted uh, should uh, council approve this zoning. There's no limitation on uses. It's, it's back to the applicant. Is there a reason why you guys did not commit to those uses specifically? Uh, well, there is a s small portion of the site that the only, let me answer your question um, more specifically, Commissioner Davis. Um, the only end user that we have for this site at this time is the Sheets Convenience Store. There is still uh, a small portion of the site that's owned by, that will be owned by the current owner now, it won't be owned by Sheets. And so just to maintain flexibility, uh, we're looking at any appropriate commercial use would be allowed on that portion of the site in accordance with the UDO. Thank you. Uh, if, if I may, yes. Amy Wolf again. Um, the, I misspoke. There are two text commitment in reference to what limitations of use is on the site. The first one is that there's no electronic gaming establishment. The second one is no residential uses, but all other uses that would otherwise be permitted in the CG district would be allowed. Thank you for that clarification. Is anyone else down here? Anyone on this end? Commissioner Freeman? I just have a question for staff. Speak um, up. I wanted to know, is there any focus on time and location uh, put in place for the planning and zoning on a property when they're close by? Like, I'm, I'm, I mean, my concern is the congestion is going to build up around 751 and 54 with both of these projects. I mean, coming at the same time, I'd imagine, and they're going to start at the same time. Is there anything that comes into play? I don't. Commissioner Freeman, are you referring pr pr predominantly to transportation impacts, like traffic impacts? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Mr. Judge talk a little bit about how we evaluate um, proposed or planned projects in terms of transportation impacts. Thank you. Yes. For this project, there was a traffic impact analysis required, so the applicant did prepare one and it was submitted and, and reviewed, and those traffic impact analysis do include um, any other developments within the general area that, that have traffic impact analysis um, associated with them. The, the rezoning we heard earlier um, down at 54 um, did not have one with this phase of the development, so it wasn't specifically included, but they do include uh, within the traffic study a background growth rate to accommodate to basically adjust for those other developments that we anticipate occurring. And then specifically like just and starting construction for both projects at the same time yeah well um there's no real limitation other than if they're both working in the same area they do have to get encroachment agreements in this case it'd be from north carolina dot so they do control or not allow two different contractors basically to be working in the same area at the same time thank you commissioner miller and unless there are any other comments mr chairman i'm ready to make a motion i'm ready oh hold on a minute commissioner huff um, for Patrick. Po point of information, how come this buffer had to be reduced? What's the, what's the uh, engineering? Uh if you look at the site, it's a very oddly configured site mm -hmm. and it's very rough topography and we did not, s you know, sometimes you're good and sometimes you're lucky, I guess in this case we were lucky, uh, that we started doing the detailed site engineering late last year and it simply didn't fit given how narrow the site is um, and so in order to um, provide for the you know we have obviously we have tankers coming in obviously to provide safe in ingress and egress for the public and for our uh, providers we we needed a, a just a slightly bigger site than we had brought to you well it's not a bigger site but slightly more uh, area and so that's why the buffer had to be uh, reduced and it, when you look at the surrounding area, you have to keep in mind there's 1,800 acres surrounding the site owned by the Army Corps of Engineers, so it's really a, something that's not going to have an impact on anybody in the real world. No, I, I was yeah, just... Yeah, but no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a safety issue. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman, um, at this time I will move that the Planning Commission send this to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. This is for case Z1423. 
motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Freeman, that we approve 6A Z140011. All those in favor, let it be known by show of ha right hand. All those in opposition. Motion carries 12 to 0. Public hearing 6B, Hendricks, South Point, overall, Z140023. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. This is another case that's, uh, or a portion of the site anyways, that you've recently heard last month for Hendrick phase two was last month, Z14-0002. Um, this month, uh, as a follow-up, we have before us Z14-00023 for Hendrick South Point overall. This uh, request attempts to combine or does combine uh, two recent zoning cases, one that has not been heard before council yet, um, but this board has seen it uh, last month. Um, Essentially, there was a phase one and phase two uh, for Hendrick South Point, and here is the overall, which attempts to combine the two development plans and remove the internal buffers. The applicant is Hendrick Automotive Group. It is within the city's jurisdiction, pending Z14002, which uh, it also includes an annexation. Um, this uh, particular item assumes approval from council. Um, should council not approve it, then we need to go back to the drawing board with this item. So this was uh, uh, reviewed under uh, the city standards. It is a city case. The request is from Commercial General with a development plan to Commercial General with a development plan. Again, there's two existing development plans on the site for the CGD district. This combines them. It is 80.70 acres, and the proposed use is for 330,000 square feet of commercial development, and that is the same number if you added the square feet from each of those um, uh, separate develop, uh, development plans. The site is generally um, has frontage along Fayetteville Road and south of Renaissance Parkway. It is does not have frontage on Massey Chapel Road, but it's north of Massey Chapel Road. There are 70 parcels encumbered in this request. Um, and the, the western portion, which you'll see here in gray, is the part that's currently in the county pending annexation with the uh, zoning case you heard last month and it will be heard by council on March 2nd. The request meets all the requirements of the CG district, uh, as well as the development plan. Um, here is a depiction of the site. You'll see that there's uh, two streams, perennial along the south and an intermittent stream more to the north. There's uh, an existing building on the site um, that, uh, um, with more under construction. There, there were at the time of the um, development plan submittal 31 single family houses along the western portion. And there's a number of right of ways through the site. There's seven right of ways. All are at various stages of being closed or the street closing process re for consideration by council. The proposal again combines the two development plans that this uh, commission has seen previously. It's for um, shows the required buffers um, th and there was a number of commitments if you recall from last month uh, that the applicant has worked out with the neighbors including the um, an extensive buffer and landscaping and wall uh, along these residential properties to the west um, again this combines that or, or carries that over um, Again, 330 square feet of non-residential for the max square footage two s potential stream crossing two side access points, 70% maximum impervious surface, 16.5% tree coverage area. Um, the same commitments uh, carry over location of access points, tree preservation, stream crossings, uh, the, uh, the berm and evergreen planting, the masonry wall, and the closing of all the internal rights of way um, are also included. So a number of text commitments um, they are in your staff report. You, this commission has seen them in the past. They are carried over to this request. There's a number of them that also include traffic improvements associated with a traffic impact analysis, which is 
this particular request did not require a TIA. Um, the TIA or traffic impact analysis is good from the previous or still effective from the previous zoning. The same architectural commitments have been made, or des excuse me, design commitments uh, that separate the differences between the main buildings and accessory buildings. And the request is consistent with the future land use map of our comprehensive plan, as well as all the applicable policies of the comprehensive plan. And staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other policies and ordinances. And staff is available to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Amy. I have one person signed up to speak, Lewis Chick. Lewis Cheek for Hendrick Automotive Group. As you've heard, this is simply to create an overall development plan for phases one and two, which have already been before the commission. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Are there other members of the audience that would like to speak to this issue? Are there other members of the audience that would like to speak? If not, I will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Commissioners who would like to speak? Commissioner Miller. Uh, Mr. Cheek, it's true that this eliminates the buffer between the two phases, but doesn't interfere in any way with the buffer on the perimeter of the project or any of the other commitments made with the neighborhood? That's correct, Mr. Miller. At the appropriate time, I'd like to make a motion. The appropriate time is now. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move the approval of this agenda item, which is the last item on our agenda. No, we got one more. Oh, excuse me. Strike. It's, it's, a, it's the last rezoning case in our agenda. No. I lost my. Okay. Oh, is there one more? I'll second. Uh, okay, so we have. Not ending motion. the meeting, but the motion. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion for approval by Mr. Miller and seconded by Commissioner Bugsby for zoning case 1400023. All those in favor, let it be known by a short right hand. All those in opposition? Motion carries 12 to 0. All right, thank you. And in the last public hearing for zoning case change, Sutton Station Z14 000025. Good evening. Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. I think everybody's ready to go. I'm uh, sorry, Amy. Go on. How are you? Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. This case is for Sutton Station Z1400025. Um, the applicant is Sutton Station LLC. It's in the city's jurisdiction, and the request is from the present designation of office institutional to mixed use with a development plan. The site is 15.94 acres. And uh, the proposal is to increase the permitted commercial uses for the property or on the property. The site is located at 5800 Fayetteville Road, which is south of Woodcroft Parkway on the west side. And it's uh, between Wood, uh, Fayetteville Road and the American Tobacco Trail. It is in the suburban tier and is encumbered by the uh, FJB Watershed Protection Overlay. The request does meet the standards for the mixed use district. Uh, the existing site uh, has a total of 10 buildings. Uh, currently there's 57 residential units and uh, a little over 147,000 non-residential um, use area uh, being utilized. The proposal shown here uh, shows a uh, three vehicular access points and two pedestrian connections to the tobacco trail. It shows your tree coverage areas along the rear and sides of the proper, uh, subject site. Other commitments includes the number of residential units at 57 um, and chain, um, the office use would be a maximum of 80,227 with a commercial at 67,000 387 square feet. Again, this three a site access point, a vehicular site access points, and two pedestrian connections. Maximum of 70% impervious surface and tree coverage at 10%. The location of the access points, the building and parking envelope, and tree preservation areas are committed. 
there's a, a number of tax commitments associated with this, including a bus pad uh, or shelter along Fayetteville Road, the limitation on peak hour trips as it relates to what is currently um, the current peak hour generation. Committed uses would be residential, office, and commercial. Uh, a minimum of uh, some additional commitments are a minimum of four additional bike racks, two directional signs identifying the American Tobacco Trail connection. Uh, improving the southernmost trail connection to six foot wide paid service and two pedestrian connections to the existing sidewalk along Fayetteville Street. There are design commitments associated with this request that address the architectural style, roof lines, building materials, um, architectural features, and how the site transitions to the context area. The request. Uh, uh, the future land use designation of this site is for office, and this request is consistent with that. Uh, mixed use does allow the office use. There is a, um, a, a, a commitment for office. It's currently office as well. Um, the site does meet the applicable policies of the comprehensive plan, as identified uh, here on this table. And staff determines this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances and staff is available for your questions. Thank you, Amy. And I have one person signed up to speak, Ron Hubbard. Evening again, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. This is similar to Hamilton Place. I won't go into all the detail, and it was one of the first, if not the first, true mixed-use project Durham got, and I was proud to be associated with it back in the 90s. And uh, so it's getting its proper designation now and ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other members in the audience that would like to speak to this? If not, I will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Commissioners speaking, commissioners speaking, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that we. Oh. Yes. Who has a question? Oh, Mr. President. I actually don't have a question. I, I just was going to say it, it appears that you have uh, addressed all the comments from the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Commission, which is greatly appreciated. So thank you. You're and, welcome. And I was then going to make a motion. Okay. So I, I move we approve uh, case number Z1400025. It's a motion by commis Commissioner Bugsby and seconded by Commissioner Huff that we approve 6C Z14 000025. All those in favor, let it be known by showing the right hand. All those in opposition, likewise. Motion carries 12 to 0. Thank you. Thank do, you do we have announcements? Mr. Chair, this is Scott Wyman for the Planning Department. Next month you have uh, three land, new land use cases plus the continuance of the Google Hub plus the uh, wireless communication facilities text amendment. Again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, is, this is the big one, not the, the limited slick stick one that you heard a few months ago. Uh, are there other announcements? Yes. This is just something that I, I uncovered when I was looking at um, the place on 54, that um, Arboretum at South Point, the people at Arboretum at South Point, no, nobody there got any message that uh, there was a rezoning. The only, uh, the only thing that anybody saw was that zoning sign out there. I even talked to the manager of the um, development, or the manager of, you know, how it's not the owner, but the manager, you understand. And she didn't know either. So apparently the property owner got, um, got a notification and didn't communicate it to anybody that was on that site. People were very surprised. And, and I um, took a little time to uh, talk to um, Marty Roop and Carborough about how we might go about notifying renters in a way that would be economically feasible so that this kind of thing wouldn't happen again. Because actually when I talked to Jared Edens about it, I told him some of the things that the renters had told me and he was very interested to know. Um, so 
I would like to, I wonder if we could work on a, um, work on a, a method of notification. Uh, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Commissioner Huff, as you, I think, alluded to in your comments, the current ordinance requires notification of property owners. Uh, and certainly appreciate your concerns about ensuring that renters are notified. What I'll do is take that um, concern back to our, we have a staff member, Mike Stock, who you've seen present many times, uh, and Sarah Young, his supervisor, and uh, Steve Edlin. Put that yeah, into, we have a, a weekly review of potential text amendments, and we'll make sure that gets uh, due consideration and report back. Um, I would like to say in closing that, that uh, Marty had some very interesting things to say about it and how to, how not to spend a lot of money <laughs> notifying people who w aren't there. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. We'll, yeah. Like I said, we'll get you some feedback and uh, follow up with you offline to make sure we, we have that information from Carborough. Okay. Any other announcements or anything to claim our attention? If not, I'll receive a motion for adjournment. Mm -hmm. Motion. Doesn't require a second. Just get up and leave. <laughs>